Hey folks and welcome to DevTrends. Today we're gonna talk about a new way to share your pre-act state called Stockroom, big parcel version 1.5.0 release and the final arrival of Bootstrap 4. So let's start with Stockroom. Jason Miller is one of the prominent open source developers. He's creative of Preact and his GitHub is full of tiny yet awesome projects. One of his latest additions is Stockroom, a plugin for his another package Unistore created to handle global state for Preact, much like Redux for React. So the main feature of Stockroom is that it offloads your main complete store and actions uh, to a separate thread via a web worker and provides handy API to sync it with the main application. It boosts the performance of the whole app even more as now all the dirty stuff like managing store isn't blocking the UI and doesn't slow your application rendering in any way. So let's see how it works in action. Let's switch to code. Here is it. So there are some base projects I have made for our Stockroom demo. So here's basically uh, our disk folder with our assets, our SRC folder with completely uh, small structure. There are two files, index.js is our main application file and worker.js where the all worker logic is allocated. And index.html, it loads our main bundle from the disk folder and our minimal webpack configuration file so there is nothing unusual here and in package.json we've installed some uh, development dependency modules like npm run null and serve to serve our static web server and here we should install uh, firstly unistore this is state management for preact um, and Stockroom itself, so it's installed like peer dependency with Unistore. So you should install Unistore and Stockroom in order to use Stockroom. And here's our webpack and worker loader to load our worker into the main application. So that's pretty it. Let's switch to index.js file. So here we write our application based on stockroom so we import single method code called create store from stockroom let's do this uh, and next we import our worker let's call it store worker and here we load it via via worker loader and pass a reference to this still empty worker file and next we create store with create store method and here we provide our constructor store worker so we create a store from a worker file from a worker thread and here let's go for an example, we make a subscribe to console log. So all changes to our store is logged to console in our browser. It's just for development purposes or some extensive loading, login. And also we include uh, some method. We'll define it later a bit in the worker.js file. It's called increment increment here and let's for example just call it here let's save it and switch to worker.js file here we describe our web worker logic we import same method called create so but now we import it from stockroom worker special dependency of stockroom here we create our store 
but now it's like plain store for example count zero so this is basically a store as you create it via Unistore and here we register actions for this store here is a function uh, and here we return increment here is our state with count key and we return next state count plus one so simply it and of course we export this store from the worker to, my, to the main trade thread so that's kind of it so let's check how it works now there's our directory let's run npm run dev let's navigate to localhost 5000 there's actually a button I've added as well but we don't need it just yet let's go to our console and you can see so there is like initial state of our application and we called uh, increment method increment action from our index.js file so uh, store is changed count edit one so it's now count one so basically you can use this uh, method not only for preact or react but you can use such store for plain DOM manipulations let's see how we can do this so there is our index.html file I've already added a button here and let's make use of our store with a plain DOM API let's go to index.js file remove this increment method and let's just query this button this query selector and add event listener add click listener to this button and here we just call this method from our store so it means every click on our button will increment our counter by y and we've already subscribed to our store so it will be locked to our console let's reload let's click it and you can see our state is changing live so we don't actually need to use preact or such uh, same library same other library but you can uh, include such store in plain DOM manipulations for your application so this is how stockroom works and now let's switch to parcel parcel has first came out a few months ago and instantly gained a lot of traction due to its their configuration nature seamless builds and probably a bit of luck as many of us got tired of hard times with webpack config fatigue now webpack 4 requires no configuration by default as well but parcel won't just stop here its developers have recently released version 1.5.0 which is really big release after version 1. It adds support for source maps which are generated with smallest overhead possible and also WebAssembly and even Rust uh, that makes possible to include Rust scripts that get executed right in your browser. All you need to have is Rust itself added via for example uh, Rust app and here you go so Parcel will automatically install all dependencies required to compile your Rust model into WebAssembly, build it and include in your client build. Moreover, your Rust files are watched and automatically rebuilt to WASM format on every change. And WebAssembly hasn't been so easy to use yet. So let's switch the code and see how it works with latest Parcel. So let's make a new folder. Let's call it 
parcel demo and submit to it. Here we are in it new project. I've already installed latest parcel as a global package, so it's one five one. And let's add some Rust magic here. So let's create uh, a bit of files. Let's create just index.js, index.html, and uh, some Rust file right here. So here is it. Let's remove our stockroom folder mm. and let's add folder for our parcel configuration projects uh, demos parcel here is it so you see there is just a bunch of files our index html it's Make a base layout here. Let's include our index.js script here. And here we got our index.js. Um, and here we got our Rust file. But unfortunately, I have no clue how to write code in Rust yet. So we just copy paste the example from. Uh, parcel block. Here is our Rust module. So this Rust module just takes two parameters and sums it. And we need to add special instruction here. It's called no mangle. It means that this method will proceed through WebAssembly as is without mangling. Ugly fine, I mean. And so you can see this is your Rust module here, and we can just can let's close it. Now we can just include this module from JavaScript file as is. So we add RC and let's console lock here. The result is at like two plus three. So, as I already said, you need to install Rust with Rust app, for example, first, but it's just single command, you just put it in your terminal and you are ready to use Rust after, after it installed. I've already installed it, so there is Rust uh, here. So all I need just to run parcel index.html So as you can see parcel will add all the missing dependencies in order to build Rust code into WebAssembly format. It can take plenty of time for the first load just because it's installing all the dependencies, but uh, all the next loads uh, will be a lot faster. Let's just wait a bit. So you can see first build took plenty of time but just because parcel installed some useful needed components of rust like cargo package manager of rust and others so build is ready now and let's switch to code let's switch to our local host 1234 default parcel code port i mean and let's open our console and you see it works it just works so actually you just included your rust file in the browser and parcel 
has done all the things of compiling, building, creating version model and including it in your main application code. So here is it. That's pretty awesome. And moreover, if you change this, this code, let's make it um, for example, five here. And you can see it reloads automatically. And if you change some code in Rust as well, it will also recompile to OS automatically, but it will take a lot less time because of the extensive caching. So that's great. It's like congratulations for parcel developers writing this and for working with Parasol, it's really awesome. There's been two and a half a year since first alpha release of Bootstrap 4 and its release version has finally arrived. Many have switched to something newer like Semantic UI or Zorb Foundation framework. Others have chosen the path of Atomic CSS like Tailwind or even writing pure CSS and JS for their React projects. But there are always plenty of developers still sticking with Bootstrap. It is the most used CSS framework around the globe and a few days ago it finally hit version 4. So the first major change is dropped old browser support. Bootstrap 4 got rid of Internet Explorer 9, 8 and iOS 6. Here is it. Also Bootstrap has gone fully flex, the grid is now in flexbox as well. And they've completely overhauled their components, changed a lot of class names for better consistency, switched from less to SAS, and made their frameworks a lot more modular. For example, now you don't get icons included in Bootstrap by default, and you are free to bring your own icons. And basically now it's new framework, a lot more robust and consistent, and with greater docs as well. So, if you stick to Bootstrap, don't hesitate to upgrade your stuff to version 4, it's in production now. So that's all for today, folks. All the links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching and stay trendy!